So to ensure everyone is on the same page, in my middle of that file, I created a payment page widget, which is a stateful widget over here. So within the payment page widget, we are having a blank scaffold. So let's start working on the scaffold. So within the scaffold, let's start with an ABBA property. We test an ABBA widget. And within the ABBA, we can have access to the title. We can specify the title of the ABBA. So let's set the title to payment page. The scaffold is also testing the body property. So let's start with a form widget. We're testing a child, and the child in turn is going to take it in a column. The reason why I specify the column widget is we want to place a two test form field within the column wise. So within the column, testing the children, where you can specify a list of widgets in here. So the first widget of the column is going to be the test form field. All right. And also the second one is going to be the test form field as well. And below is the button, which has an unpress. For now, let's set it to this. And also, it takes in a child, it's going to taste in a test widget. And it let's specify the test to be make payment. Right. Let's save in the changes. So let's let's initialize our controller and also the form key, right? So I created a controller here which is the amount controller and also the email controller so basically this reads the payment amount entered by the user from an input field using the test editing controller called the amount controller so the form takes in the key and i'm going to specify it to be the form key you just created over there right so let's save in the changes over here so let's proceed to add some properties to the test form field so let's start with the controller and assign the amount controller to the controller that will handle the user input right so below the controller we can also assign auto validate mode and we are going to auto validate on user interaction and also let's give it some validator and it's basically a function we are going to assess the value of what the user enters right so in here we will check if the value is equal to now or value dot is empty then we return a message of please enter an amount in the default case we are going to return now so let's also give it some um, decoration to the test form for as well and it's going to take in an input decoration so within the input decoration okay let's start with the prefix icon um prefix right that is in a widget so we are going to specify it to be the test widget and specify it to be ghs that's the ghana city and also the hand test as well the hand test basically gives the user a clue of what he or she is going to enter so let's specify it to be an amount of thousand for example and also the label test as well of an amount so let's give some border to it which is an outline input border that will give it the outline shape of the input right so we'll be doing same for the second test form field so i won't waste much time so i'll just copy that and repeat repeat it right so in here i'll change the amount controller to the email controller right we are going to validate as well but the message is going to be different we are going to check for the email so please enter the email in case the value is got now or empty and the def default case we are going to return now so you can get rid of the prefacing here and also with the hint text since it's an email let's specify here to be maybe example at gmail.com right you get idea so let's also change the label test as well to be email and also let's leave it to be outline input border right so let's save in the changes in here so this is what we have so far right so let's give enough padding to the form so i'll just wrap the form within the padding widget right and let's give it a padding of all size to be 12 saving the changes right you can see the effect over there and also let's give some spacing between the two test form field right so i'll wrap it within a pattern 
and I'm going to apply this padding only to the top so I'll specify only and to the top side I'll give it a padding of 15 and just saving the changes over here all right there we go we can see the effect let's do the same for the button apply some padding to it to the top so I'll wrap it within a padding widget and this padding is going to affect the top only to the top let's give it a pattern of 20 save the changes right okay that's pretty cool let me focus much on the ui right just the functionality so i'll just paste in this right so this is my public key and also um, my paste stack plugin right so we need to have that installed the flutter paste stack right and initialize that so when you check the perspect.yml file we can see that dependency over here the flutter page stack right so when you have that you need to initialize the plugin right so once you're done with that i also created a message variable in here i'll be using it so in the init state right once the app initialize right we are going to initialize our plugin right so we do plugin dot initialize plugin dot initialize right and we pass in our public key which in case is over there so just saving the changes so in here we need to create a function for making our payment right and i'm going to name this function as make payment And this function is going to be called within the elevated button right so within the elevated button we just call that function make payment so within the make payment function i'll be creating a variable in here which is the price which is going to be of type integer and i'm going to pass the amount controller to an integer right so int dot pass then we pass in the amount controller then we multiply it by 100 multiplies the entered value by 100 to convert it to the lowest denomination of the currency using the end dot pass method so in here i'll just initialize my charge in here so a variable of charge which is going to be of type charge right and create an instance of that so we can have the amount method on this charge right so let me get rid of the um semicolon over there that's causing the error so in here we assign the price to the amount right we can also get the reference over here so dot dot reference and i'm going to set the reference to the daytime right daytime dot now so ref underscore then i'll just pass in we assess the daytime dot now you can also pass in the email as well right and we're passing the email controller email controller dot test to the email right so once we have a successful payment we will be getting a message through the email and also finally we can also have access to the currency right so it's going to be ghana city so ghs so the currency is going to be ghana city ghs so that's basically it So we pass in our amount and also we set a reference to daytime dot now and also pass in our email where we're receiving a notification and finally our currency right so we'll be getting a response back right so the response is going to be of type checkout response right so checkout response oh oops so checkout response now create a response variable in here and it's going to assess the plugin dot checkout so we need to await that so we await plugin dot checkout so in here we need to pass in the context right and also the method of the payment 
and the method is going to be checkout method.card we are going to accept card payment in here so the method is going to be checkout payment.card and finally we need to pass in what our charge right the charge we just created over there so So since we have an await, we need to make the function an asynchronous function, right, to get rid of the errors. So we need to check the state of the response, right. If the response state status equal to true, right, we assign the message variable just created to be payment was successful, and just set the reference response dot reference. And once we have a successful payment, we just navigate to the payment success widget, right. That takes in the context and also the material page route which in turn also takes in the builder and the builder is basically a function that takes in the contents and return to the payment success page which is not yet created right and passing the message so i'll just create a file within the lib folder and i'm going to name this file as payment success page dot that right so here that will be we'll be navigating once we have a successful transaction right so i won't bore you that much code over here i'll put the link to the source code in the description so you can check it out right so this the payment success page once we have a successful transaction we'll be navigated to this page right so we have a look at it so we can get rid of the navigating here and also within the payments page we need to import the widget right so let's import that and saving the changes so i think that's basically it right let's give it a try